Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. Looking forward to a great time together with you. And you know, Ruth, it is a, a wonderful opportunity to be back together again. We are back into the spring months where the yep. sun is shining longer into the evenings. <laughs> And uh, we are enjoying exactly. later nights. You can head outside, walk the dog, yep. grill some food, enjoy a little bit of sunshine. Hopefully it'll get warmer soon. It's been cool. It has been cool. Mm -hmm. So how did you fare with the theft of the hour? The hour of, uh, oh, we the hour is gone. We tried our best to <laughs> move our clocks on Saturday, right? Early in the day. Early in the day. He's like, Let, we slept in and he says, Let's go ahead and move our clocks up so we don't feel it as much tonight. I still felt it. I'm trying to, I, I was trying, we tried really hard. And in my mind, maybe it was me psychologically or not. I just couldn't, I felt it anyway. But you know what was great? What's that? Usually Sunday morning service, you see it in the attendance. Right. But People Sunday was out. great, yeah. yeah we had great, great, great. Everyone was. Well, this is the start of Sleep Awareness Week. How appropriate yes, is that's that? Right. Uh, we're going to talk to you. Did you and know the importance this, of sleep? I was going to yes. say, did you know sleep is important? No matter yes. when you go to bed, experts say you should get at least seven or eight hours. Seven to eight hours that's of right. sleep a night. And it's also good if you're feeling weary to have twenty to forty-five a twenty to forty-five minute nap. Nothing longer than that because it can interrupt your sleep pattern right. if at you, night. If you go too long with that afternoon siesta, you will pay the price it can throw off your sleep rhythm. This so, is a big thing though. It says, the article said, do not eat anything after 6 p.m. And if you, it's hard to not eat anything after 6 p.m. Oh, I don't, know. I don't know if I receive that. Don't eat anything after 6 p.m. Don't exercise after 6 p.m. Probably no coffee after a certain hour in the afternoon. It doesn't what? say that, but I would think so. At 8 p.m., you should turn off. You should turn off all the lights, oh, all artificial on. lights. <laughs> maybe your Who's gonna do technology. That? I don't know. Maybe. Yes, I know that's hard to do. Light technology. I've heard that. Turn your Abraham Lincoln. Turn your turn your <laughs> iPad off. Turn your computer off. No TV after a certain hour to okay. help you sleep better. I don't think it's gonna work for me. I'm sorry. I don't think that I would be able to shut the lights off at 8 p.m. and not have a snacky after That's 6. What it says. I go to bed hungry every night. That would be desperate in that situation. No, I know because you were a, he's a snacker. And so he's, we, we tease him about being like his grandmother because his grandmother mm -hmm. Mary would have a snack every night before she went to bed. And we just had his sister visiting and she was teasing him because every night, he has to have a little snack, that's right. and that's okay. Uh, yes, it is okay. It's okay to have a little snack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Ruth. Okay, <laughs> moving, moving on to other topics today. Over the weekend, we had a pretty major financial yeah. jolt. Now, we're still seeing how it's all going to pan out. We want to hope for the best, but be attentive to mm -hmm. what's taking place. Two banks were shuttered over the weekend. Uh, as Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, I think you're going to hear those abbreviations quite a bit, uh, and also Signature Bank out of New York City were both closed um, as they became basically insolvent. Mm. Um, following along on that, you know, President Biden has come out and is trying to reassure everyone, saying, hey, we should feel confident about the banking industry, that the... Uh, the taxpayer will not bear the burden. Of course, people are looking back to the 2008 uh, banking disaster that we had when we had hmm. the, uh, the real estate bubble pop. And uh, of course, people have been asking for a while, hey, is this real estate you know, potential decline going to create the same? Some say it's not the same. Some mm -hmm. say this looks and smells like a contagion mm -hmm. that could spread to other banks. Um, and I think the real thing that people are waking up to is that FDIC insurance covers a depositor to $250,000. Mm -hmm. It's not an endless insurance policy that covers everything, everywhere, every time kind of mm -hmm. deal. And so the, how, is, how is the government going to really play out yeah. on that? Because some of these banking, uh, bank depositors, especially at Silicon Valley Bank, were uh, startup companies and these these new yeah, I don't know. groups that were coming, trying to bring, uh, using venture capital and trying to bring forward uh, these different products and so forth. And they burn through a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. And what happens if all of a sudden their cash is gone? Right. 
So, you know, that, that's a whole other challenge that will play out probably over the course of this week. Keep your eye on that one. Yeah, that's a mess. Something, something to watch. Well, other things that we should be attentive to today has to do with the fact that the electric pickup from Ford yes. is out. We've seen, in fact, saw one in our neighborhood. Yep. And uh, however, they had to slow uh, distribution of those because the F-150 Lightning, one of them was sitting at a holding plant in or holding lot in Dearborn, mm -hmm. Michigan and caught fire, the battery caught fire. And that caused them to have yes. to recall 18 of them that had already been shipped out mm -hmm. to dealerships and mm -hmm. or had already made it to a consumer's home. They are being recalled so that they can get a new battery. That is crazy. That can bur burn the house down, seriously. You know, yep. If it caught fire in your garage or something, that'd be crazy. I don't know about the electric vehicles. I know that's where they want us to go, but there are many concerns in my mind, including what we talked about last week with the ability or trying to have the capability of controlling your vehicle. Right. Well, Ford is the same group that came out with these new patents saying, hey, uh, we are, want to be able to shut off the vehicle or make it return to a place that we can tow it from. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, there was even some discussion. Thank I don't know if it was out. quite this complex of them being able to make the thing drive itself back to the dealership. <laughs> can you believe that? Or, or lock yeah. you out or turn yeah. off functionalities like your air conditioner if you weren't paying your bill on time. That's crazy. This seems like a, I don't know, doesn't it just kind of seem like a violation of privacy? It does. It does. You no, know, seriously, it does. And then I'm not sure about, for, for me, I'm like thinking of the pickup. I don't know. I, I'm just talking because I've never ridden in an electric pickup truck. Uh -huh. But one of the things that I like about pickup trucks is the power behind it. So does it have the same power? And, and, well, and yes, no probably way. does. I mean, I would, I would think it would. Well, the thing with electric vehicles right now, okay, with the trucks, there is a lot of concern about what they call the internal combustion engines. They have much more range and towing capacity because th these trucks do have a lot of towing capacity, but if they've got a lot of weight on them, a lot of times they really shorten their range down to mm. maybe even around 100 miles. And, you know, that's not feasible for, you know, you can try to pull a trailer and, you know, you want to go across country and pull your trailer like a lot of miles. Do you remember those cars we work. used to play with that you would go backwards and you'd kind of wind them and then oh, they yeah. take off? It kind of reminds me of that. Like they have so much and then after a while they kind of run out of. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. Uh, but in terms of speed and power off the line, electric vehicles are supposed to be very quick, very quick, very, mm -hmm. uh, mobile and agile in that regard. I just, well, I'm not sure we're scary, quite though, to there. Have... However, Ford is trying to produce, a, by the end of 2023, ramp up their production to a rate of producing, listen to this, 150,000 F-150 Lightnings a year. That's mm -hmm. a lot. So we'll see. They, you got you to gotta fix some of the problems. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Okay, Ruth, what else do you want to talk about today? Anything exciting coming to mind? Not really. Do you, do, do you want to talk about the other... Uh... The defense budget? Yes. Well, I think that's a good one. <laughs> because, you know, we keep hearing about yeah. all of the threats in our world. Taiwan, and yeah. the Chinese, and what's happening in the Ukraine, and with Russia, and our own border. Can we secure... You heard that there was a... Was it a thousand people who tried mm -hmm. to rush the border, I think, over the weekend? I don't think they got in, but still, that was kind of crazy. So the Defense Department has asked for their largest budget ever. Will oh they get goodness. it? Who knows? But they are asking for that. And there is concern that the Chinese now have more ships at sea mm -hmm. than we do They are in terms of Navy. Uh, yeah. So Enemies, for sure. A lot of challenges in our world. That budget you're talking about is eight hundred and forty-two billion, eight hundred forty-two billion dollar budget, I believe. I, you know, it's yes. it, these numbers are just billion for the next year. Yes, <laughs> that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I do believe that there's probably some aspects of that that are really needed. You got to continue producing material, but the other side is, I wonder how much of it's being wasted. You, oh, you have a budget that big. There's got to be some things that aren't being spent right. You know, that they're not doing mm -hmm. well okay well we've got some great guests with us today what are we going to be talking about today oh we are going to talk about how love wins a 
couple of local young ladies who are with one of the wonderful dance studios, uh -huh. dance groups, and their preparation for their uh, Easter. Easter. Awesome. All right, let's get to that. We'll be back in a minute. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Certainly appreciative of each and every person who is faithfully giving here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. I, I just want to say this: we are viewer supported. You know, uh, the, we are a nonprofit entity, and been existing here in this uh, community for 35 and a half years. Isn't that exciting? That's yes. a big deal. Yes. To, to have the longevity of ministry in this community, working with so many wonderful local ministries. Mm -hmm. I, I'm excited about the folks that we have on board, folks at Legacy Church, folks at New Beginnings Church, mm -hmm. Calvary Chapel Rio Grande Valley, Calvary Chapel East, folks at Carlsbad Calvary, Evangel Christian Center, local ministry, Strength for Today, people that we're producing in studio, mm -hmm. uh, just different ones, Warring Eagles. Man, what a great group of, of local ministries we have. But we are supported through the faithful donations of people just like you. God has been so good. And we just like, like to invite you to our website, kazq32.org, to find your programming there and also give safely online. If you'd like to call into the station, you can do that at 505-884-8355, extension 101, to speak to someone, or simply mail in your donation to 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. There are different levels uh, that you can give to. Of course, you can give any amount you'd like, but if you'd like to support the family safe haven level, that's with your gift of $32 a month. That goes towards purchasing family safe programming for your family. We have a window of entertainment every year of safe programming, and that's what that is for. Also, our president partner level, which is with your gift of any other size, specifically 50, 75, 100, or any other. Just make an allocation if you'd like it to go towards equipment or if you want it to go towards new camera, different things that we talk about, that's the place to do it. But we want to say thank you so much for partnering with us all of this time. God is good. If you'd like to send in a prayer request, you can do that as well. We pray over those every day. Thank you so much for your support. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We're privileged to have with us today two wonderful young ladies who are going to be talking to us about the Magnified Dance Ensemble and a spring performance of How Love Wins. We are welcoming Carolina. Valverde and Trinity Harbaugh with us today. Ladies, glad to have you with us. Thank you. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about some fun things that you guys are involved with, but we look forward to, first of all, getting to know a little bit about you. So, Carolina, tell us about yourself. Sure. So, I'm currently attending UNM, um, but I've been with Magnify Dance Ensemble since I was eight years old. So, it's wow. been quite quite a long time with them. A veteran. Them. Yes, yes. Um, so it's been great getting to come back and, and serve as an alumni and rehearsal director, as well as a guest artist with the company, getting to perform roles that I that I did a couple years back and just be part of the family again. So were you apart, then you left, and then mm -hmm. you came back again? Is that the way it's working? Yes. Okay. So when I was 16, I, I left and then came back um, the year of COVID and then was able to to join Magnify Dance Ensemble again. Well, wow, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Trinity, you've been with us a few times before. It's yes. good to have you back today. Thank you for having me back. Remind us of all of your wonderful experiences with Magnify Dance Ensemble. Yeah, so I've been a part of Magnify Dance Ensemble for 12 years now, so since I was five, and it just brought so many amazing opportunities to my life. I'm so grateful for them. Well, that's it's good things that God has blessed both of you with yes. in, in that area. Let's talk for a few minutes about How Love Wins, which is the spring performance, mm -hmm. right? That's the one that's coming up in just a few weeks. What's the history of the show? The, the spring performance is not quite as uh, long-running as the one around Christmas. So tell us the difference. Which, which uh, one of these are we going to be having the opportunity of highlighting today? Spring, I suppose. Yes, yes. So we're... We're here to talk about Howl of Winds. It's our eighth season uh, with this performance, and it is different from our Christmas show um, in that it tells the Easter story, the, the story of the death and resurrection of Christ. Um, and it's really great that we get to share our faith through dance, which is a little bit different from what 
maybe some other companies get to do. So it's a really special production in, in that way. So since this, the, the Christmas presentation is been around for 30 plus years, right? Mm -hmm, that's right. So this one to be around almost a decade, but not, yeah. not quite as long. How long have you been involved uh, in the Easter presentation? So How many I've, times have you done that? Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be in the production seven times. Oh, almost every time. Yes, yes. Okay. How about you, Trinity? I have been in it since it started. So I've been in it for eight years now, and it's just been so cool to like progress in my roles and progress as a dancer through Hall of Lens. So do you get a gold star if you get it every year? I mean, that's pretty cool. You've yeah. done it every time. Yeah, I just, I get the privilege of being able to grow as the show grows. That, with that's it. great. Well, let's talk about how it's impacted each of you ladies personally. Let's start off with, with you today, Trinity. How has the uh, this presentation made a difference in your life? Yeah, so Hall of Lens has really given me the opportunity to share my faith and evangelize and just show what I believe through the God-given gifts of dancing. And it's really such a great opportunity that not everyone's been given. So I just, I really enjoy sharing the gospel through my dancing. I would think that maybe you, of course, I'm sure that people that are your friends and your family and maybe people at school know that you love dance. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So is it a great opportunity to be able to invite them to come to something that's going to share a gospel message? Yeah. So a lot of the times when I invite them, they don't really know what to expect. They don't know that it's actually a story, uh, a bi biblical story. So it's great to show them the best of both worlds. So Carolina, tell us a little bit about how it works for you because you mm -hmm. were there, you left, came back. How has it impacted your life? Yeah, I think it's really cool to see my personal growth when, when I started. The roles just kind of meant something different to me and then getting able to grow and experience different things. It's been really great to see that kind of growth in myself and and realize that the story of Christ is not all happiness. There's a lot of hardships with that. So the artistic aspect has definitely changed. Um, my perspective has changed a little bit as I've gotten to grow. I think that you've picked up on a very important piece. A lot of times in our world, we hear about the love of Jesus, which, hey, that's central to the message of the gospel is that yeah. God so loved the world. But there's also the aspect of picking up your cross daily and following mm -hmm. Jesus Definitely. and following his example of doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't mean that every day is, you know, one spiritual high to the next. There's mm -hmm. going to be ups and downs, isn't there? Right. And the, the story of the resurrection is much about that. Mm -hmm. The excitement of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, the disappointment that he's arrested and crucified, mm -hmm. the excitement of the resurrection. Definitely. So, all of those things. Well, favorite part, favorite part of the things that are, that are coming up for you. Have, you said you have progressed through different roles. Is that kind of a, a unique and special part of this? It is. I started off as the like bottom of the barrel, I guess you could put it. And now I'm at like the top of the company and I get to be a mentor towards the younger dancers. And I think that's such a special part is just being someone that the little kids can look up to and try to achieve one day. Yeah, because they're they're watching, aren't they? Yes, They've yeah. Got their eyes on mm -hmm. you ladies who have have done <laughs> it so much more and I'm sure that they do aspire to to being able to to reach that next level. This is a pretty big production. How many people are going to be included? There's about maybe 50 dancers um, included, but that's wow. just people who dance. We have parents, we have grandparents, brothers, sisters who help backstage, which we couldn't do the show without them either. So it's a very, very big production. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a pretty large production. Yes. You got a lot of people on, on the, the back side of things, making mm -hmm. things happen at the right moment. A lot of costumes. Yes, lots of costumes. A lot of wonderful things that come into this. Um, when you think of, of a production of this size, how long does it take to get it ready? So our artistic directors start casting the production probably in November. So, so you haven't even finished the Christmas production. You're ready for getting ready for spring. Exactly. So we started rehearsals um, early January. So we have about three months to prepare, but it starts early November, um, getting everything ready so we can be ready. Did either of you participate in the Christmas production as well? 
Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Both of you did? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you just turned the page from one to the next. That's exactly. right. <laughs> you ever get confused? Is this for this production? Is this for that production? Is, are, you, are you able to keep it clear in your minds? I think it's easy to keep it clear. There's a little bit of a distinction. Christmas Joy is a little bit more classical mm -hmm. um, based, and then Howl of Winds has a little bit more of a contemporary, some jazz pieces in there. And so you can kind of feel the, the difference in, in tone with, with the style. Gears. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the differing of stories. Mm -hmm. Christmas Joy sets the experience a miracle, and Halloween's, I like to say, is ex experience a continual miracle. So it's really great. Who do you think should come? to Howl of Winds. Yeah, I think Howl of Winds is for anyone, whether you're a believer or a non-believer. It's a great way to re-energize your faith and just see what the Easter story is about and confirm some of the things. And it's just a beautiful production altogether. And there's going to be two presentations, correct? So yes. tell us the dates. What dates are they going to be available? Yes, we have Saturday, March 25th and Sunday, March 26th, both shows at 2 p.m. Is that going to be, that? that's a little bit prior this year than to the uh, Easter weekend, right? That's right, yes, a couple weeks before. And that's a little different, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought so, yeah. because mm -hmm. usually it was a little bit closer to Resurrection Sunday or Easter as we, we would call it more commonly. Well, here's the big question. Let's go for a definition. How do you define how love wins? Yeah, that, that is a very big question. Um, I think it's it's great to see in the story, like we mentioned before, that the resurrection is not just the most amazing, happiest story. There are a lot of difficulties along the way, and so it's it's great to to remember that even though we're sinners, Christ died for us for our eternal salvation, which is really powerful, um, something that shouldn't be taken lightly. So to be able to express that with this group of of young dancers is really, really impactful, and to get to dance and glorify the Lord is, is really special. Let's talk for just a moment how folks can find tickets, because mm -hmm. that's the, the way to get to go, is to get your tickets and get them early. Where yes. do you find your tickets? You can find your tickets at the National Hispanic Cultural Center website, so you can look up nhccnm.org, mm -hmm. or you can call Magnify Dance Center, or go to their website. It's There's many ways to find it. So there's going to be a presentation on, is it Saturday night or Friday night? Uh, Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. Oh, both afternoons. Okay, yes. Saturday and Sunday afternoons. So make sure to take special note of that. That will be the last weekend in the month of March, so mm -hmm. just around the corner. Thanks for being with us today. Yes, we certainly thank appreciate you. <laughs> to the book of Genesis chapter 24, talk about Abraham for a few moments. So as you're turning there in your Bibles, I was just thinking about our family safe uh, donors and uh, what a blessing they are. Yes. You know, we're involved also uh, through the support of people like that, local friends like you, of producing a new series. It's gonna be a family uh, program that we're excited about. Yes. So we'll be talking more about that in future days. Yeah. Well, in Genesis 24, Abraham is getting older. In fact, it says in verse number one, it says Abraham was now a very old man and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Mm -hmm. But he has a concern, Ruth. He has a concern sure. that his son Isaac needs a bride, needs a wife. He's 40 years old. And uh, Abraham's 140. And he's thinking, you know, I've got, we've got to take care of this. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. So he's, he's talking to one of his servants. He says, I want you to go back and find a wife for my mm -hmm. son. Let's pick up the read around verse number five and hear okay. the discussion between the servant and Abraham. Verse five through seven, the servant asked, but what if I can't find a young woman who's willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? No, Abraham responded, be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. What a statement of the fact that Abraham had faith for the promise of God. Yeah. 
He said, you know, I, God has given a promise that my son, I mean, my descendants are going to inherit the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to transplant him back to the place that we came from. We've got to hold on to the progress God has given us, knowing that greater progress is ahead. And that, there's a great truth in that. You know, God has brought you this far. Don't go back. And remind ourselves of the promise that God has given us. A lot of times we're like, but look at the circumstances, right? What he did was he reminded himself and, and, and relayed it and said, no, the Lord has promised this to me. And, he, and we're not going to take my son. You're not going to take my son back there. And then he makes a statement. He says, he, speaking of God, will mm -hmm. send his angel ahead yeah, of good. you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. God's going to work in this situation. You know, other times we need to encourage other people, hey, God has a plan. God's working in this situation. Mm -hmm. You can't give up on it. I'm not giving up on it. I know God's working. That's good because sometimes whoever you're speaking to may be discouraged and feeling like God's not hearing them. So it's important for us to reiterate what God has already said to encourage them with the word, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. And to have confidence and to, you know, there's something powerful about speaking forth the yes. promises of God. Yes. That's exactly yes. what Abraham that. does for his servant. Well, have faith for the promises of God. You will never be disappointed. It's always a privilege to be with you here on Spectrum. Hey, to share with somebody, to tune in with you. We've got great guests. You will not uh, want to miss out on anything that's coming up on Spectrum. Thanks for being